Move 11. Move 11's in the house. We don't have a submission from you. I have uh, Slow Hand, Astrobate, Nefidov, Jim, and Stefanos thus far. We got um, Mr. Coffee. Tonight is a very important night. The most important day on the pagan calendar. Is it, it's tonight, I think. May Eve. Is that right? It's May Eve. It's Walpurgis night. So, if you're into pagan stuff, let's have a party. I'm opening a beer in honor of pagan rituals. Seriously, it's like the other Halloween nobody knows about. Here in Eastern Europe, they ward off evil spirits by like making loud noise in the streets of villages and stuff. Anyway, what's up guys? Welcome to the stream. We're doing our subscriber stream with game analysis. Not just Hungary. I mean, this, this is a pagan tradition that goes back to like, you know, pre pre Roman dude all over. This is not just about Hungary. I mean, all over Europe. Very important. May Eve. Halloween is nothing compared to that, dude. But, um, all right. So May Day is tomorrow. That's, that's a important holiday in the, in the like Anglo-Saxon tradition. Mr. Slohan just gifted a tier one sub to another TTV viewer. They gifted 97 gift subs in the channel. Was that a random gift sub or did you pick him out? This was a random gift sub. Mr. Coffee donated the sub to Mubot yesterday, which I thought was very generous. A bit unusual, since Mubot isn't a real person. But we appreciate it. What's up, guys? We're streaming Game Analysis Thursday, so I do have only five games thus far. It's a little bit, we're a little bit short. That's not a bot or anything like that, right? Another TTV viewer. Whatever. No conspiracy theories here on my stream ever. I don't have a lot of bot viewers like some people. But I appreciate the few that I do get free gift subs. <laughs> Mr. Sonny Grind gifted a tier one sub to Lucky for Fun Bot Master. I don't know about that one. I've seen the other one. Botmaster. Do we have some room for more submissions today? I thought you said subscriptions. Absolutely you have more room for submissions. I know it's like tomorrow is May Day and it's Walpurgis night and and all the demons and devils are gonna come out in Europe, but um you know, let's have a party. Let's let's get lots of subscriptions today. Um, Herr Kaffee, Mr. Kofefe. So, um, slow hand after being nephew of Jim Stefano. I, Ste I want to call him Stefanova, but, um, Stefanos. So we got Astro a second slow hand. Yeah, I didn't miss anybody. I don't think I missed anybody. I feel like I missed somebody though. Jim, Jim is in the list. Yeah, I don't think I missed anybody. So we do have extra room. Move 11. What I was going to say, it's like hot as hell here. And that's why I'm I'm kind of not surprised that it's already May Day. Oh, we got a thousand bits. What is this thing? There was a thing on my head. Bob, did I get your submission? Hey, maybe that's what I missed. Mr. Bob. Bob, maybe you were first. I have to check when slow hand came in. Mr. Slow hand, there it is, 37 minutes ago. Bob, I don't know, man, I don't see anything from you. I mean, we're, we're back to last week here. 
I think maybe I must have banned you. There you are. Okay, so you're probably after, let's see when it was, one hour ago? Yesterday. So if it was yesterday, okay, you were more recent. I don't know why I missed you, Bob. Sorry, man, you weren't banned. I guess you were there somewhere, you know, like in the last couple. We'll put you in. I'll put you in in the fifth position. Warnaki sent in a submission. All right, move 11 was toying with, Astro Bay just gifted, Astro just, Astro Bay just gifted one tier sub, tier one sub to the community. It's Pasta Programmer. All right, so Astro Bay. Guys, thank you for the gift subs. I also didn't have time to mention that um, Mr. Slohan donated a thousand bits. For some reason, my Twitch doesn't update those um, bits and gift subs very quickly. I had an internet outage yesterday. We, um, my internet provider is being taken over by Vodafone. And, um, and this has been going on for like, I think the deal has been going on for like two years. But um, I think they finally kind of finalized it, like the technical part of it is starting to happen. So although there's lockdown in addition, it seems like for the first time in the last couple of days, my internet has really been hit hard. We are starting to get knocked offline once in a while. Mr. Slohan, two gift subs, Mr. Coffee, Astrobay, one each, and Mr. Slohan, grind with 1500 bits, night be free, Baron's end night. Thank you guys. Slowly, we're gonna get started with some games. It's hot though. I don't know how it is where you are. COVID 20, thank you for being a subscriber. I feel like I could just go swimming in my office in the air. But I don't wanna, I don't wanna bust out I don't want to bust out the room fan just yet. We're close to that stage, but it makes noise. All right. So we're going to get started. Who is... Who is up? Last one. We got Warnaki. And we're waiting on move 11, possibly. All right. So slow hand grind was first. And this is our lead... Our lead donator to the stream. COVID, yeah, you like the COVID-20 name. Slow and where are, where are you? Back a ways. You guys see all my secret emails here. From my enemies, friends and lovers. Bob's like writing everything down. Hi, Slidey. Quick humiliation with the King's Indian Defense for the Thursday subscriber stream. Simul against NM Chess Machine Live again. LeeChess.org. What's LeeChess.org? Oh, oh, that's where we're playing. Here we are. All right, this is Mr. Bob. Quick humiliation. It shows uh, uh, something from Bob's character. That he's willing to, you know, he's a little masochistic. He likes to show off when he gets beat down. Like when he caused trouble in high school, just so he would get in trouble to get attention. Oh, I'm supposed to be doing Mr. Slohan's game. What am I? This is Mr. Slohan. I'm saying it's Bob. I'm sorry. I got confused. This is Mr. Slohan. Forget what I just said. He's not like Bob. He doesn't like to humiliate himself, but he is submitting a game where he lost, which I think is unusual. Like 90% of our of our viewers submit games where they win. And I think it's a little too much, honestly. You know, I understand like when you show off your, your wins and stuff, but but we should see more of a balance between games that we win and lose. Anyway, forget what I said about Bob. Sorry, Bob. I was thinking it was your game because we were just talking about you submitting a game and you know, my, my chest dementia and everything started to, it just, you know, it's, it's a long day. I'm basically here in my, my free time.
insidious disease. All right. You're not supposed to submit wins. There's only like three results. So anyway, this is NM Chess Machine Live versus Slow Hand Grind. Let me flip the board. F4. What is it, Weird Wednesday? I have chest dementia. Totally. Brain numbing that started several years ago. I think it happens when you hit around 35. Um, so F4 is not the move. Where did this come from? What is this? Did I just click on that? Okay, D4, Knight F6, C4. I just want to make a note, guys. Thank you for supporting the stream. Continue to do so during the epidemic and long after it is passed. I appreciate the support of the Panda. Also, I should say a word. Say a word, Panda. Hey, don't forget to wear your mask, Mike. But anyway, thanks everybody for supporting the stream. We really, really need you. Thank you. Bye bye. All right, thank you. You have kind of a New York accent going on there, Panda. What's up with that? All right, anyway. So, d4, knight of 6, c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7, e4, d6. So, someone, someone on sound, another one of our. You're in my mind. I'm thinking about someone on sound. Slow hand playing black here. Very good King's Indian player. Bishop d3. This is an excellent choice against Mr. Slowhand. The Sarawan attack. This is one of the few variations I never played with white. I am 0-2 against it. I lost against Larry Kaufman. And I lost against Prohashka Peter. I'm 0-2. Maybe it was played against me by a weaker player that I beat. Now that I think about it, like way, way back in the day. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, this variation is a problem. I think it's a little bit of a problem for black. The first problem is that it seems like in all the lines of this line, you don't really get like the standard King's Indian play on the King side. It's very hard to get a King side attack oriented position against Bishop D3. Anybody who plays the white side of the King's Indian, if you want a recommendation for a variation that's like safe, but kind of aggressive, like this is a very good line. And I can't really say enough about it. This um, this crossed my mind some months ago, and then it, and then the chest dementia kicked in, and I was I forgot. I think the last time I was thinking about this, I had actually thought about looking at it as something to really play for white. But then, you know, it's just like out of my brain, and um, so. Before we go any further here, I'm going to turn off the engine for a sec. Um, one Now, can one not for pawn attack the King's Indian defense? No connection between chest dementia and playing f4. But speaking of the King's Indian defense and, f, and the four pawns attack, um, you know, frankly, I don't have a problem with the four pawns attack. Actually, this was suggested in a previous stream. If you don't like getting attacked against your king, you know, if you don't like your king getting attacked on the white side of classical King's Indian stuff, I mean, the four pawns attack is a pretty good way, I think, for white to get, let's say, the space advantage on the king side a little bit, where you're not going to get attacked on the king side. Black usually goes to a Benoni type of structure, and then it's not, it's necessarily not oriented toward attacking like white's king. So if you regularly get checkmated on the white side of the, the King's Indian classical against, you know, anyone like this guy that we're analyzing his game here, Mr. Slowhand, probably the four pawns attack is, is a reasonable way to go. Um, there is some chances, though, with moves like f4, if you have a tendency to overextend yourself, you probably don't want to be playing the four pawns attack. It's very easy to overextend yourself. Bishop d3 is, is like, you know, a way of ensuring that you don't get attacked on the king's side without necessarily overextending your pawns, like in the four pawns attack. But I think this is a great line. Castles, knight e2, that's the point. This is very important, because I've had a lot of games with people on stream that like did this. This is like patently bad. 
Black will have bishop g4 at some point here. And I wanted to highlight something when white plays bishop d3, okay? What's the downside of bishop d3? The d4 pawn. That's really the problem. I mean, that's why when we play knight f3 or bishop e2, pretty much any other variation, this pawn is covered. The one square that really stands out, when white plays bishop d3, there's a big fat weakness on d4. It should be really apparent, you know, if you're a King's Indian player particularly. So that's the point that black tries to attack. And in general, black's going to try to play on the dark squares in the center. But this knight move allows white to play either f3 or f4. And there's no sort of pins or anything with bishop g4. So now against Prohashka and Larry Kaufman, I think I played knight h5. This was a trend in, in the like early 2000s to play this move. I'm not really sure where it stands at the moment, theoretically, but I lost with this twice. So maybe it stands to reason that we should look for something better. This was recommended by some King's Indian books years ago. As an attempted improvement over the immediate e5, you see a5 not being played. Yeah, a5, it's not a bad move, but it's not our first priority, Mornaki. It's a dark square, I'll give it that. We're definitely focusing on the dark squares, but more of the central dark squares. a5 is a little bit away from the action there, buddy. But not a bad move overall. Um, so e5 is like a classical move. d5, knight d4. I remember that John Fedorovich was a friend of mine, um, had a game with Yasser years and years ago that he would still, he would still talk about it. Like, you know, he talks about things like 20, 30 years after they happen. He's still talking about it probably. The other day he shared in his Facebook, like a picture of a Ryshevsky Simul. He's like, you know, that guy swindled me three times. This little boy <laughs> playing a Simul against some old guys in like the 1800s. I was like, what? Anyway, so knight takes d4, e takes d4, knight e2. The, the Sarawan Fedorovich game is knight b5. Now, I remember being like a teenager when this variation was starting to be trendy. Yeah, is knight e7 reasonable? This is probably the first thing you should think about. Is knight e7 reasonable? What's the problem with 97? I've never played it. Clearly, knight g3 is an option. You know how much I love that move. How about f3 and g4? Is that going to be a problem? Well, it's easy to say, but let's just double check here. Looks like a few people didn't know what they were doing. They tried to get away with this, but let's hypothetically say black plays 98. How bad is this? I mean, I'm not sure that white setup is, is like that great on the queen side. You know, I'd rather have my knight on d2 than e2 going to c4. Let's see, bishop e3, f5. There's a Alexander Fier game here. And he played e takes f5. It, it's like c5 is going to be a problem. But this relatively strong Grandmaster didn't win against the 2496. Choosing to play e takes f5, though, is an important strategical decision point, you know. Um, black can take with the pawn, or black can take with the, with the knight, probably heading for knight e4. Taking with the pawn I prefer, because it keeps control of e4. 
Then White might play something like F4 later on. But, you know, my honest feeling here is that it may not be that bad for Black. Mr. Slowhand, the results are not that conclusive. I don't think it's like out of hand black gets crushed or anything like that. Um, yeah, but this is clearly preferable to play knight d4. Knight d4, e d4, and now knight e2. This may be something new, I don't know. What the deal is with knight e2 versus knight b5. Fed was always under the impression that knight b5 was the best move. Um, rook e8 now. Rook e1. And then you've got Nesbadinov like moves like knight to g4, threatening queen h4. Aronian versus Nakamura, 2011. Vaguely familiar to me. h3, a6. Okay, they're probably following old games. It seems to be like black can hold the balance in these lines. Probably the same with knight e2. Pawn takes pawn, knight e2, rook e8, f3, and now there's no counterplay with a6. I mean, the scare, the scary part here is the score for white. If you guys look at the score here, the engine doesn't think the position is that good for white, but the score is, like, devastating. Because King's India players are usually getting some kind of kingside attack. And I had the same problem against those two good players that I played. Larry Kaufman, of course, famous for his work with computer engines and stuff, and Parashka, both of them beat me. Um, not easily, but I never got any activity, like with both games in this type of line. It's very hard for Black to get an active kind of counterattack in this variation. That's why I would recommend it for White. Um, so c5, you're just securing your protected pass pawn on d4. That looks good. There's a Basim Amin game here from 2019. He's sometimes on Lee Chess. Really, really good King's Indian player, by the way. He also plays the King's Indian attack with white. So c5, bishop g5, and now queen c7. Yeah, I mean, I don't like queen c7 ever in the King's Indian. Just not a square I do. You know, the queen has no mobility there. I'd rather put the queen on like f8 or something. I don't know. I've never seen this position before. I mean, white has a very, very strong pawn chain. It's a lot like a Samish. That's going to be hard to, to break. Yeah. Yeah, Coach Ah. Thanks for subscribing. I haven't seen one of these 92 lines in a long time. Bishop, Bishop D3, 92. It's a good line for white, you know? There's no kingside attack for black. There's no fun. It looks like this is a theoretical move, queen c7, but I don't like the queen on c7 in general. It's like, just kind of badly placed. It's in, everything's in the way, you know, it has nowhere to go. Not that there is necessarily a good square. All right, so h6, I would prefer. Let's look at h6. So it's obviously bishop h4. That's the point. You want to induce, induce black to play g5 and weaken his king side, but how bad is it? Pinter versus de Grea from 1996. Bishop e1. So here, maybe we can find some improvement were these guys all playing knight h5, the most obvious move in the world. The engine's just a5. <laughs> it's ridiculous. a5, stopping b4. We got it in there, Warnaki. No, I don't know. I don't know what to say, man. I mean, there's no obvious, and I can't really trust the engine here in this kind of closed King's Indian. I don't trust the, the stockfish. You know, one other question, can we go back for a second, is... Is c5 forced? Maybe you want to think about this. Maybe we want to think about this a little bit harder. 
Because that's it. Like, once you play C5, you just lock the structure. There's no flexibility after that. I hate closed positions. I think we ought to seriously look into this. Another pincer game. I didn't realize that Yoji was playing this. Very briefly, I worked with Yojef. But mostly we just hung out and drank beers. Um, he's a good guy. Anybody who loves to, to play chess and drink beer is a good person in my book. Um, really approachable. Great, great knowledge, knowledge, Pinter. But um, I don't know. I, this to me looks interesting. I, I, I like the flexibility. You know, maybe we'll get a B5 or something fun. Silicone boobs, nice name. I'm, uh, I'm fattening up a little bit myself. I, I don't know if I, I don't really need breast implants, I don't think. I'm not gonna show, I'm not showing, am I? All right. I have gained a little, probably five pounds on lockdown, but I'm um, welcome guys. No, I like C6, I like, I like keeping the tension. I understand C5. My problem with the position is this, dude, this pawn, this pawn chain is just brutally strong. Very, very hard to break it. The bishop g5, and this is this variation seems like a problem. So let's see what he did. Maybe he has a solution. Queen c7, queen d2, and you did hit him with b5. Wow. But basically, once he plays queen c7, you know, okay, I would like to play f5. It's a risky procedure, as it is in the same as King's Indian 2. Boris Golko playing with white. I think he beat Kasparov in the same ish. Or Kasparov like tried to play f5. Try to play f5 at your risk in this type of structure. Sometimes it backfires. Um, so you play b5, wow. Extreme pawn sacrifice. I didn't personally have those kids, Bob. Who's counting? Um, all right, c takes b. So this is the engine move. I don't want to spend all day, guys. Unfortunately, I would love to analyze the King's Indian. I have sort of nostalgia for this, Mr. S Slohan, but um, obviously F4, it's a freaking problem. I think this variation is just good for white, dude, honestly. Black has a hard time against this line. You need to do a lot of work. Luckily, not many people play it. Now b5 is a move. Wow. Mr. Slohan, did you know this? Perhaps, maybe you like messed it up. Like maybe you misremembered it. Maybe you misremembered it, like you had analyzed it before and seen this position and you tried to play b5 in the wrong moment, because this is theory. They're following this freaking game from 1987. Nenishev, Nenishev Yermolinsky, 1987. So Yermo, Yermo played the Kings Indian against me in our first game. That was a draw, New York, 1990. 1994, I think. Um, yeah, Yermo can play everything, Uncle Yermo. But um, Yermo was good back in the day. So you misremembered it. So it's 97 F4 B5. This seems to be a good good solution. You just misremembered your own your own analysis. B5 strong, and you're good to go. After that, C takes B. Oh, so everybody played B3. Nobody's had the guts to play C takes B. Wow. This is a fun position, huh? C4 could happen. Speaking of Naka, Naka would love this. Man. 
Yeah, Levente says the King's Indian sucks. Everybody who, you know, plays the King's Indian probably says it sucks. It's an extremely difficult opening to play. I don't say it sucks. I've had, lot like, losses. But my view about the King's Indian, Bob, is that... Yeah, I mean, one day I woke up and I'm like, why the... F am I, like, giving people a space advantage every game? And... And that, that, it works great until you're like playing grandmasters and stuff. And then all the, all of a sudden you realize like you're spotting your opponent, like a huge space advantage every game at the master IM level or GM level, it starts to be a problem. It worked fine until that. And, and like Levente's right, like to a degree, I mean, it's also a lot of work. Um, yeah, I mean, I just got tired of people having space advantage constantly. So yeah, you misremembered your analysis. This is a good line, but B5 is wrong. All right, let's see, CB5, A6. Unintentional theoretical novelty. And White just calmly like, pins it. And then you're just, <sighs> what's he going to do? He lost quickly here. Knight takes d4, queen b6, bishop b3, knight takes d5, dude. This is like what you did against me one time. He must have wanted to kill himself. Just loses all his pieces. So it's funny that he actually was doing well. He played it perfectly until this point and moved the wrong rook. <laughs> so after this, like rook a c1, he's totally winning. You just don't have any answers. Wow. a b5, a b5, this falls. You can do some speculative stuff. But objectively, it looks like you don't have enough. Anyway, it's instructive. You you misremembered your analysis, and then he gets a winning position and messes it up. The rook can't do two things. It can't pin a pawn and protect the other rook. It's overloaded. So apparently he could have saved the game somehow here, but I mean, it's, it's already like significantly better for black. If his best move is to do that, that's not good for white. This looks pretty awful. Imagine b3, c3. Wow, you apparently can play this. I don't want any part in this position for white. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. I don't know. But anyway, um, it does look like promising. Your variation actually looks promising. Queen c7. Probably we go back to the drawing board and white just keeps playing knight b5. And maybe Yasser knows something that this guy doesn't. You know? It's just like... We go back to, we go back to Sarawan Fedorovich, and it's it's like a draw, probably, but very slightly better for for White. Um, yeah, this move it's like ninety two looks a little congestive, honestly. That's the feeling I would get. Looks like ninety five is probably best. All right. Anyway, long analysis, guys. That was serious, serious game. We'll have some lighter games. Let's have some lighter games. Aster Bates up next. Usually got some. Slightly less serious game. Welcome to the stream, everybody. Thank you for supporting the stream, Mr. Slohan, Mr. Coffee, Acerbate. So those of you who did donate, please continue to support the stream. Again, Mr. Slohan, Knight be free, Baron Zen Knight. I appreciate it, everybody. Um, also, Jim and WJ Lou for your donations this week. Much appreciated. Tomorrow we're going to be back, Friday. Bob, thanks for... Uh, for for hanging out and checking out uh, Vita Levente. He's actually streaming now. Don't leave my stream. Um, later, if he's still on, I'll raid him. I, I don't know if he's going to be on that long. But, um, yeah, he's very knowledgeable. He's right about the King's Indian. King's Indian is a tough opening to play. It's a fantastic defense for black, like, below the, the title player level. But I think it gets very hard to play. I mean, that's why Kasparov stopped playing it, playing that opening. You know, it's just very, very difficult. Um... All right, Asturbate, what's up, man? I got more. All right, Asturbate. Where's your game analysis, dude? 
Where is your game analysis? Thursday commentary. One of these games where I couldn't wait to show everyone. Then Stockfish pointed out my inability to do the, the mate right. No, it doesn't suit your style. You're not that uncompromising. I'm not saying that in a bad way, you know. I think you're you're ration, more rational. What is this? All right. A little bit of lighter lighter game now. E4, E5, knight of three, knight c6, bishop c4. So here we've seen a lot of h6 from Acerbate's lower rated opponents. It was funny. Just amusing. Acerbate showed me a game where somebody played this. E4, D5, pawn takes, queen takes. D4, H6. And I was like, you know what? I mean, I, I don't understand, like, what black is thinking. But obviously, when you're talking about this position, H6, I mean, this is what people play every day. I had a student show me a game of this position today. He played the right way. D4, he blasted open. Blasted open. I showed Acerbate a million times. Do not mess around. So... Black can't really maintain the center. You know, he has to give up the center. If, if here, you just take and you win a pawn at the very minimum. But f6 is a different story. Now, I think if black wants to play f6, he might as well try, like, the Damiano defense, right? Is this... <laughs> you guys know this, right? Knight takes e5. Kadash. Deceased. Famous Hungarian master for playing 1h4 frequently. The Kadash opening. Kadash Gabor. Playing the Damiano defense. Knight takes e5. If if takes, queen h5 check. It's, <laughs> uh, it's not good. It's not good. But it's still probably better than, I don't know. It's a marginal question. Is it better than f6 here? Kadas Master. He probably played your a5, Wernaki. Yeah, h5, a5, h4. I never met him. He was living till a few years ago, I think. Um, all right, bishop c4, f6. Saul would like to play h5. Just call Saul. Saul. So bishop c, bishop c4, f6. See, now here's what I'm talking about. What do you say? What do we do? h4? What do you guys like here? h4? You can't really blame Asturbate for playing c3. He's sensitive to this diagonal. You know, he's, he's thinking about that diagonal, playing for mate. I mean, it's possible that c3 is not a bad move at all. We're going to have queen b3 with a primitive threat of bishop f7 check and bishop takes g8. But we'll always be vulnerable if we try to set that up with knight a5. What do we do here? Yeah, I mean, d4. You blast it open, Astrobe. It's the same thing. I think you've got to blast it open. You know, I mean, c3, it's nice. It's not bad. But he's like one degree of separation from some kind of like almost playable Steinitz defense or something like after g6. Is it that bad? If you mess around here too long, I mean, he's gonna be able to like create some kind of playable line. It may not be that easy, you know, like g6, queen b3, knight h6. Now he's threatening knight a5. It's kind of a pain. So, I mean, I'm not looking at the engine yet, but I'm going to tell you that's probably what it's going to play. D4. Blam. No, it's no question. You have to blast open the position. You know, I was looking at an interesting position, something similar from the Sicilian. Of course, the problem is like take, 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 take. We could, we could borrow an idea if you want to be really aggressive here from someone on sound, one of our favorite subscribers. Live for chess, welcome. We can take it to another level now if you want to play Gambit style. I think that it's valid 
don't do anything crazy like acerbate with e5. He has an obsession with that. Castling looks, in fact, like a tiny bit slow, I would say. You might as well just take the pawn on d4. But c3 in this position looks really strong because this wouldn't give him time to like just mess around. You're threatening now cd with a rolling center that's just going to like rip him apart. So now black is left in, in a situation where he has to make a very awkward choice. Either he lets you take on d4 with a crushing rolling center, or he takes on c3, speeding up this like awesome Danish gambit that you have with white. This looks, it looks really bad. So I don't think that black can take. Like he basically has to play like, I don't know what, you know, d6 or something. This looks horrible, but well, there's nothing else to do. You know, this is probably his best shot. What do you think? That dog is going to be dinner soon, if it keeps barking. All right. Yeah, d6 is the only move. He's been interfering with my streams a little too much lately. Better than the domestic I <laughs> issue I had last evening stream, when my neighbor downstairs was, like, killing his family or something. But still, the dog is getting on my nerves. The dog must go. Notice how he got quiet. Very smart dog. Anyway, just kidding. So, Astrobate, this is slow, dude. Bad move. And I like your spirit. Spassky-esque Queen H5 check. Nah. It's it's like too hope hope Jesse. It's a little too hope Jesse. Moving the same piece twice. Black plays g6. Black plays g6 here. I don't buy it. This is actually a useful move for him. Stopping queen h5. And anyway, it's a good move to help him develop. Guard the f5 square. So knight h4 is actually a mistake. It's funny, the computer wants to play queen d7. That never would have occurred to me. An Evans Gambit style move. That's cool. I have to admit, I'm a little confused. What is he gonna do? Play like king d8? What, what's the deal? What's wrong with g6? There's nothing wrong with g6. I'm not playing queen d7 with black. But anyway. All right. So instead of knight h4, you should come to your senses, play d4. Let's see what happened. Entertainment, f5. Um, well, if you hadn't just played f6, like, maybe it wouldn't be so strange to play f5. The guy just played f6, like, two moves ago. So surprisingly, queen h5 check. Not a lot of options here for black. I've been known to hang a maiden one lately. So, you know, from the frying pan into the fire, you might choose to play king e7 here. I would, if it was a simul on Sunday, by the way, I have a simul on Sunday, I'd probably play like king e7 and then wonder what happened to my game. Where did my game go? Oddly, I was mated with the move queen f7 last week on Sunday by Miralis. Defended by the bishop on like c4, b3. I have a fascination with this. <laughs> I don't see it from a mile away normally. Um, clearly g6. Okay, so now you have two options. You can sack the rook like a Latvian. With pawn takes g6 and get mated. Is it mate? That's funny, it's mate anyway. Mate in all lines there. So black has to play like knight f6 now. Oh, he has queen f6. Okay, losing all his pieces. What am I missing? Oh. M G. -G. 
What? Never in a million years I would have come up with this, what he did now. <laughs> this guy is kind of a genius. He's pretty weird, but um, a good creative. I have to be the first to admit I would never find this. My opponent plays knight of six, probably like one of the only moves. And I would have simply retreated my queen, like in all honesty, queen h4. 100%. This would have been my move. Black doesn't have a really good answer. He'll have to sack the rook. Um, whatever. But Astrobate, that wasn't good enough for him. So, he goes a step further here and, and analyzes a second possibility. Bishop f7 check. It's mate and eight. Dude, we should put you on like a talk show for this game or something. You should be on a chess talk show. Middle-aged chess player finds the most brilliant mate ever. Maybe we can get you an article in The Onion. Seriously, I'll submit it. Do they take submissions? Middle-aged chess amateur finds most brilliant combination of all time. <laughs> Bishop f7 check? Seriously? Who even finds that move? Who even thinks of that move? That's perverse. And the thing is, he's not a cheater. I vouch for him 100%. With almost anyone else, I would be suspicious. But Astrobate, I can assure you, is not a cheater. He did not find this with his with his smartphone. He's just uh, he's on another plane, you know. Normally, his like his plane is is not really gelling well, you know, with ours. But once in a while, they kind of hit, and and he finds something like brilliant. Another plane of of uh, well, he has to take right because if here it's simply made game over, we could eliminate the possibilities forcing moves. He has to take and double check. Double check. If king g7, it's forced mate. We acerbate mate. King e7 is forced mate, obviously. So our choices are limited. King e6 only move. Now it's mate in seven. Check. It's like straight out of Lasker's manual chest or something. Unbelievable. King e5, he just got lucky. <laughs> uh, he just got lucky. Oh my god. He just has to have faith. d4 check. You know, the, the secret of this move is that it, it suddenly adds f4 control to our position. That might not hurt. Okay, so he did make a mistake, proving that he's not an engine. But I think the question that we're all wondering is like what happens in the case of knight takes d4. The million dollar question in everyone's mind. What happens if knight takes d4? You know you're getting good when you have a king on e5 in this position. All right, so where's the mate on knight d4? Because I didn't see it. Maybe I'm missing something obvious. It must be f4 check. King e4, knight e2 check. That's kind of a mess. I mean, you could take on d4, but king d4, bishop e3 check. I'm still not seeing a mate. We're going to cheat. Okay, so here I saw this, but I was concerned about knight d2. Holy shit. Astrobate couldn't have worked this out, obviously. He just played on intuition. But who finds this? Does Magnus Carlsen find queen c4? No. Yeah, if you put him in a problem-solving contest. But not, not, not over the board, probably. Magnus, as well as myself, and most people would probably play like knight d2 check. This is apparently made in four. Acerbate knew that, obviously. He 
So his opponent plays king e4, f3 check. This is apparently a blunder. Proving that you're not an engine. Sadly. Perfect game, gone. Your perfect game is gone. Knight d2 check, king d3, queen c4 check, king c2. Suction, please. There's still no mate. That's the funny part. So here you have to play like queen e2, and then black can play like knight d4. Then you take, and then finally the mate is unavoidable with discovery. That's sick, dude. But you didn't find it. Anyway, it was a great game, man. f3, king d3. You know, clearly there's no way the black king is getting out. Astrobate castled now. Later, boobs. Thanks for joining us. Castles. Queen e7, rook d1 check here. Queen c4 check, no way. Material is no, you know, is no matter. Check. You've been hanging out with Morphe too much. <laughs> queen, d, queen d2 check and mate. Wow, man, that was like the greatest game ever. Seriously. You definitely deserve a hand. It was basically Astrobate's immortal game, is what we're going to call it. The immortal game. That's the same, dude. Incredibly. Also, Astrobate supporting the stream a lot. Thank you so much, man. But, um, but hopefully you're learning, you know. But I think this is natural talent. It was a fantastic game, dude. Seriously. Almost perfect. What an amazing concept. I mean, just the concept of Bishop F7. That is sick. I mean, maybe there's other games where that's happened. I'm not familiar with it. You know, I guess it's an idea. I have never seen it. Probably Bishop F7 is, is known, generally speaking. Great job, dude. All right, so Nephi Dive is up next. Where is Nephi? Nephi Dive, game to analyze, please. Number two, take two. Thank God it's not a game against me. That's all I have to say. I think I lost my last game against Nefidov. No, it was a draw. That was it. Nefidov often puts in his games against me. Now he's cheating on me. With with Grandmasters now. Everybody's a chess streamer. All right. I'm going to be here when the virus is over, guys. So just remember to come back to me. I'll still be here after you after you're done cheating on me with these other title players. When they abandon you to go play in their regional tournaments and stuff, I'll still be here. Believe me, I'll still be here, and you'll come come crying back to me. Oh no, he's not doing simuls anymore. Will you take me back? <laughs> You're going to come crying back to me. You and someone on sound. All right. But seriously, this is Nefidov against um, Tilchev, the Bulgarian chess traveler. All right, <clears throat> e4, d6, d4, knight f6, e5. It's a good anti-Nefidov system. But the problem with Nefidov is that he, you know, he'll grab a draw if he, you know, you can't depend on him like counterattacking um, or going crazy. He's gonna. He's going to get a draw first and then play for the win. If you're a Grandmaster, you want to beat him with black. you got to watch out because if you play too solid, he'll just grab onto that draw and he'll never let go. It's like a dog biting your ankle that you can't get it off. Alien face hugger. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing at my own jokes now. Anyway, we're having fun, right? This is a fun stream, but D takes E5, D takes E5. Oh. This is when you just start going off stream and banging your head on the wall, you know. Why did I play e5 against this 2000 player? Um, you see, most people don't do that exchange. But Nefedov is, again, as I said, you know, not to criticize him, but he's willing to take a draw against a higher rated player, which can be a good thing, because some, some people are too, you know, they're too all or nothing, you know. Um, 
I'm an original chess streamer. An original. The original, not the original. An original. I'm original. That's good. Queen D8 check. Look, guys, I don't I don't advocate this, okay? But I understand why Nefidov is doing it. But let me put it this way. If he was playing a player who was his rating or lower, there is no way I'm playing D takes E5. This is not really a good move. I mean, it's very much the same as in the old Indian, the um, the so-called Ukrainian variation that I play with black sometimes after knight C3, E5. We had this discussion once on the stream. It's not good really to play D takes E5. Let's understand why. Move 11, Queen E2. Hold on a minute. So E5, you know what? That would be a great matchup, move 11. Nefedov against Boris Privman. 20 game match in the Philidor. What do you think? Pavel Nefedov against National Master Boris Privman. Philidor. Extravaganza. Um. But you don't, yeah, FM. You don't play D takes E5 here. Because I don't think you're getting enough for it. You're trading off your central pawn. This pawn is stronger than, than this pawn. Duh. Right? Number one important, most important thing here. Why? You guys are learning something. You can go watch bullet chess with, with some, you know, 13 year old master showing you how fast you can click a mouse. But I'm actually gonna teach you something here. You can exchange this pawn on e5 and be like, oh, I have an advantage, black can't castle. You know what, it's not a big deal. It's not that big of a deal. White has some kind of microscopic advantage after this, but that's not the best way to play. You know, the biggest problem when you make this exchange, first of all, you're trading a fourth rank pawn for a third rank pawn, and, and that's to black's advantage. But secondly, you're free, excuse me, <clears throat> Freaking liberating his worst piece, dude. His bishop went from bad to good in one move. This is not really worth it, you know, taking away his right to castle. So if you were playing, um, what's his name? Guys, remind me again, that Grandmaster um, that has Todor Todorov. Yeah. Todor Todorov would just... He'd have no, Nefedov would have no chance against Todorov. Ironically, they're from the same country, Tilchev and Todorov. Um, but, uh, but I don't know. I don't think that Tilchev, maybe he doesn't have that Todorov vibe, you know, that he's just loving the end game like Todorov so much. Um, more of a universal player, I'm getting the feeling. But, anyways. Yeah, not, not the best decision. Anyway, queen takes, king takes, bishop g5. I also don't like this move, frankly. Um, you can play what you want. I don't like it, really. I don't like it. I don't want to give up my dark square bishop under any circumstances. I guess you're not really going to trade it off, I hope. If you do, you better trade your white square bishop for his white square bishop. This just feels active, although white doesn't really have a good move in this position. Yeah, bishop c4. Coach Ah, did did we lose Boris Pridman during the virus epidemic or something? One time I got really, really upset with that guy. I went nuts. You know, it was it was a blitz tournament at the World Open. And, you know, I've been playing chess for a long time, even 20 years ago, I've still been playing chess for a long time. And he he kept like hammering my clock back and telling me that I had to use one hand or something. I don't know what I did. I captured a piece of two hands or I castled with two hands or something. He freaked out, hit my clock. He's still okay, hopefully. Okay, the wording there, you know, so I started screaming at him. There were like little kids and their parents like watching. I, I don't lose my temper in public that often, but for some reason I was I like lost it. I, I've told the story before. Move eleven is. <laughs> we laughed about it, but Bishop G five. Um, I don't like, you know. I 
don't want to trade my, my bishop at all. So this is a bluff. It may not be a bad move, but I think it's a bluff. My bishop e6 is probably better. You know, stopping bishop c4. Again, it's very similar to the Ukrainian variation. d4, knight f6, c4. Also bad for white is this variation. Maybe you were here, actually, Coach Ah, when we discussed this the last time. When we discussed this, same thing. I don't like this. I don't like exchanging pawns. Okay, now you have to trade queens, but I don't really like bishop g5. But again, here, this is probably black's best move. Just a coincidence, I guess. It doesn't matter here. I mean, this bishop is not coming to c4. This is not the same reasoning why, why bishop e6 is good. You got to beat him to the punch. The best black has here is like bishop e6 and offer a draw. Black has zero winning chances against a player who's like, I don't know, 400 points lower rated. Not really where you want to be. Um, okay, f3 would be good. I don't like bishop e7, even, honestly. I want my bishop on c5 here with black. I'm not concerned about the double pawns that much. So there are other options for black. Now white is okay. White is okay. As long as black doesn't get bishop c4 first. Very, very pawn structure oriented. I would be tempted to play bishop e6. But I don't like my rook being tied down. Okay, so now Nefidov goes on a weird tangent with g4. I don't know what g4 is even about. Um, just seems really random. This diagonal is extremely important. And we don't want him to play like b5, a5, and trap our bishop or something like that. I agree a4, though, looks kind of scary. Like black might get the b4 square. So I don't really like white's position. I don't know what I would do. But I also don't think g4 is a good move. g4 just looks kind of weakening and has no real plan. I guess he's going to pull the bishop away and then play g5. He doesn't intend on exchanging his dark, his dark square bishop, which is good. At least not for a knight. I, I don't want to trade it for anything. But see, this is a problem. I don't like the way the Nefidov played this. He's in danger of being worse. Well, c6, king, c7, I didn't say anything. It's a standard plan, and you know that, Coach Ah. You know, anyone, let's say 2100 or even maybe 2000, is aware of this kind of standard plan with c6, king, c7. White should be playing like f4 somehow to take advantage of the king on c7. But obviously that's not that simple to, to actually execute that. To undermine the pawn on, on e5 would give us access to the king on c7. Difficult to do here. Now, Tilichev is probably better. You know, I don't know about exchanging on b3. You can kind of wait, maybe. It's probably not bad. g6, take away. You know, so it looks like Nefedov could lose this position. But remember, at the end of the day, the pawn structure is symmetrical. And that's why this opening is a bad choice for Tilichev playing against a lower rated player. Um, I hate symmetrical positions, symmetrical structures, for this reason. Good for Nefidov to try to draw. But it doesn't feel like he's really playing for a draw. Now, this is a nice plan. I've seen my friend Ilinchich win in, in like symmetrical Petrov, like exchange French type positions. The fact that Nefidov's pawns are doubled here, this plan of this is nasty, a5, a4, b4, maybe he's got something here. And that's a bad, probably a bad move. I mean, why trade rooks now? Nefidov's not threatening anything. There's no way he's penetrating on the D file. But this is simul and, and black probably got low on time. But objectively, you know, lose like one rook exchange is probably not a big deal. But I prefer not to trade anyone. I would probably play like rook B8. I guess he didn't like this diagonal, potentially. But it looks like he's really close to a strong attack against against Nefidov's king here. 
Rook B8 looks like it might be good, actually. Black is, is significantly better with A4 coming. So I don't like trading pieces here. You don't trade pieces when you have the initiative. This is a mistake. Rook D8, Bishop G7. I don't want any bishops coming to G5. That's kind of a weird move. Nah, this might as well just offer a draw. The very strange move, but Tilche had three minutes, so he just started to play for a draw in time pressure. But you never play rook d8 here. The whole point was to play a4. Actually, why can't he play a4? Oh, there's g5 now? Even that doesn't work. Why can't you play a4 here? He can. He just started freaking out, you know. He did give himself enough time for the simul, probably. Rook d8, this is this is like very little advantage now. Nefidov should be able to hold here comfortably. Wow, he apparently could have won a piece with bishop h4. Doesn't win a piece, though. No, I'm not sure. Oddly, that bishop could get trapped. f6, g5, king, king e8, king f7, or something crazy. That's difficult to see. But I don't understand what Nefidov was doing. I guess now he realized his bishop is trapped. I see. If bishop h6, g5... And it's not getting out. So he desperately played this. That, that makes sense. And now he can hold on. Man, black's still better. Those double pawns. Not great. Black on doubles his pawn. He didn't do it. So g4. Man. Not enough time for the simul for black here. He tried to play 50 games. Oh, you're talking about 50 games. 50 games in the simul or 50 games for that guy? Anyway, whatever. I mean, there are guys who try to do 50 board simuls. It's silliness. That's why I play 25 people. I want the games to actually be constructive. It's it's ridiculous, 100-player simul. You know, what is what is this? Black's making, like, bad moves all over the place. Um, clearly, he would find g4 if he had any time. But this move is, like, hopeless. Now it's like you draw it best. Nefidov, Nefidov goes a pawn up, but it's still a draw. Pewter here. The pewter thinking white was winning? I doubt it. He has two pawns up though. Yeah, he ended up two pawns up. Not sure if it's a win. I mean, the double pawns are a bit big problem. Black played really, like, strangely passively there. Eventually, we just reached a, a draw, I guess. This is a this is not a draw. This is this is two connected pass. I mean, two separated pass pawns. Yeah, it was a really badly played game by Black. I don't know. Nefidov got opportunities, but honestly, now we have two pawns. I was looking at this with, with Hubatis, similar endgames. These are very interesting. You could almost take like the G and the F pawns off the board here. I find very interesting like two separated pawns when it's opposite colored bishops. And you can take a study of all those different kind of positions. And this is pretty similar. This is right on the borderline. Right on the borderline. We'll take some donations to install the air conditioning, DK guy. Our our, our subscriber bit donation goal, 500,000. Just tossing the number out there. If you don't like the wife beater, I'll I'll change my outfit for 500,000 bit donations. Um... How much is an air conditioning unit? Probably not that much. I can always try. But um, it's like Walpurgis night or whatever. May Day is tomorrow. It's summer. Um, it's extremely hot here. You probably... Living in Denmark, you wouldn't understand. 
You got the Scandinavian climate. Must be nice. It must be nice not having like Mediterranean air in July when I'm going to be like dying. So save your donation. <laughs> save your donation. Save up your money to make the donation around like the middle of July. Okay? Because that's when I'm really going to need it. When the Mediterranean air and humidity is just killing me. Um, no, this is not Denmark. It's quite hot here. These two pawns, though, Black tries to keep it, you know, keep the tension, keep the tension. What happens here? He just walks up and takes it. So basically, Nefidad was able to just trade that guy off, and now he's probably winning. Just pretend these aren't here. The pawns are separated by two files. It's really close, and obviously king position and how far the pawns are advanced makes a big difference. This pawn being way up on e5. Number one, Nefidov has this pawn way up on e5. Number two, his king is actually really active, so that's probably enough to win. But he's got to play perfectly. DK guy, DK guy, um, whatever, Tilchev did his best to keep that pawn back. And he's keeping it back, right? Here. Uh-oh. Now we're going to have to blockade differently. Good job. And now he's got a force field. No way to break the force field. So the engine thinks that white is winning around here somewhere. Right? If you look at the evaluation, though I don't trust this, it dropped down. King c4. Oh. Is that relevant? So, I have a wife beater and I'm drinking beer. I'm bad, bad hombre. But seriously, guys, support the stream. Is King C4 an interesting move here? It keeps in touch with, I'll keep in touch, with the B3 square while also keeping in touch with the D5 square and aiming to support this pawn. Damn, dude, look at the analysis by the engine here, G5. Okay, that looks like basically losing instantly. G5, F takes G5, yeah, it's game over. That is sick. Look at the table base, bang. G5, F takes G5, winning. Dude, if you have to play G5, you're done, you know, right here. G5 is not an option. That leaves us with a pawn, and the pawns are separated by four files now instead of two. Like, literally, the last move Black should play is g5. I love these kind of end games, but he can't afford to let the pawns be separated by four files. He would never consider g5. He knows that. And that have let him reach a for fortress. So, king c3, and we get to a clear fortress here. King d5, apparently he blundered here. I don't know how he can win though. Maybe it's a draw. This is not a table base. There's too many pieces on the board. What you've got to do, and I looked at this, is basically like not let this white king get active. Nefdov's king got knocked back to c3. I mean, this is not really good. He was up there on like b5, and now he's on c3 and the black's king is on d5. And then he creates a sort of force field. And now the force field looks pretty, pretty secure. Like, how do you break this horse field? You can't get in over here because it's going to put the bishop on b5 the minute you try to penetrate over there. So you have to look for avenues for the king to penetrate. It's going to have to come over here, up here, over there. That's the question now. If you get your king to g5, but how do you get your king to g5? He can't even cross over. It's very tricky. You can't, you got to get your king to g5. So, like, king e2, king e1, king f2, king g3, etc. would be enough that was the only way to win. But he just, like, doesn't try. That's one way not to do it, to not even try. So what happens if, like, king d2? Yeah, I mean, I would try this. King e4, e6. And black's holding on. 
check this out f6 e8 bishop e8 no it's not a win very tricky those end games Nefidov might have been winning with like perfect engine like play I mean but not easy it's a real close call in that one Jim Bob Jim Bob is up next the pawns have to be separated by the maximum number of files and you have to have good king position it looked like Nefidov was right on the precipice of winning that position I mean seriously like one tempo away um Suggestion from one of the viewers will be noted. All suggestions will be noted. Would you like a different color of wife beater? I also have white. All right, anyway, back to the analysis. Jim, Jim and Bob forming the Jim Bob, Jimmy Bob team. Mr. Coffee thrown in a study. Is that for this? If you need a subscriber game, I'm taking forever on these games. We're doing like super deep games, so we'll see. 7.52, we're streaming till nine-ish. We've got Jim and Bob, all right. Pub Slide, you check out our Discord, guys. I think I'm logged in there now. I'm trying to pay a little more attention to stuff. I smell something cooking. Is that? Bob, are you cooking something? Coming over the internet. All right, Jim. My neighbors must be cooking something. It's like lofting. Wafting, that's the word. Wafting down from the sky. Jim. Mr. Jim, it's a draw one hour ago. That's, a, a, that's our game from Correspondence Chess. Since you reminded me of this game yesterday, give it a glance if you have time. Pretty sharp play on my end. Crucial moments. I can forget how... This better not be our... You better not have submitted our correspondence game. All right, it's Jim versus Mysterious Expert. Rapid Chess. Jim is white. I was I was telling Astrobate today that he should play e5. You know, probably the best line. The simplest line to recommend to people is just to play e5, you know. Oh, I was thinking of the Polish, I'm sorry. Never mind. That's the chest dementia again. That's the chest dementia. I confused b3 and b4. I was talking about against b4 you should play e5. Okay and go into this line. This is probably like white's best against the Polish. But anyway, b3, it's a better move than b4. Definitely. Knight c6. I think the Chigorin is particularly playable against b3. Um, Bishop e2, and then d5. I've played this before against Jim. I think we've had a bunch of games with like e3, a6 in time. Keeping one's natural cooling process. I'm naturally cooling. Exactly. And looking good while doing it. I hope I'm just, do I look fat? Honestly, in the shirt? I'm just kidding, guys. Just trying to be, just trying to be funny. Does this make me look fat? Have you ever heard that before? You'd like that. E3, E5, Bishop E5, F6, D4. Wow, this looks familiar. This is why he submitted it. Now I understand, because, okay. Now we gotta... We gotta say what we learned. You gotta get me a beer, Elizabeth. Um,
Nobody gets my jokes. But anyway, yesterday I claimed that Move 11 played a game in this line, and I was wrong. As usual, the chest dementia strikes again. It wasn't f6 he played. It was bishop d6, and this is a better move. This develops a piece, ladies and gentlemen. The Kobayashi Maru. Mr. Coffee with a Star Trek reference. That's how you keep her hooked, eh, Bob? Yeah, the best just, just keep looking at other women. They love that. But anyway. No, bishop d6 is a better move than f6. Look at look at the tiny difference in the in the engine here. Point one, you think, oh, it's not a big deal, point one. It's a big deal. It's a really big deal. Apparently, like, bishop d6 is much better than f6. I didn't realize. But, um, anyways, I played f6 in a game on the stream yesterday. Chess Dementia. It was Tuesday in our arena against some random, really weird player who played pretty well. Um, but I had this misconception. I was playing something I thought I had seen before when I hadn't. I mean, I played a, a few games with B3 years ago, and I probably even like looked through this line briefly. I mean, I know F4 is an interesting idea that was mentioned in a book I have. I think that would be fun to try, you know. Yubaba would definitely play this. Yeah, I'm not wearing any pants. There was a story yesterday about some newscaster who got busted, like not wearing his pants when he was doing like a Zoom call or whatever. You guys can trust me on it, right? I've been streaming for four years. I always wear some form of pants when I'm doing the stream. You can you can be assured. Um, but the less formal I get with my, you know, upper body attire, you might start to question. Anyway, I like F4, but whatever. It's just for fun. So this move is apparently like the best move. I didn't really know that, you know. The engine likes knight c3. Only Bador Jababa knows this move, probably. But my opponent did something interesting. D4, and I also played E4. Debatable, but probably... I don't know. If you take, queen takes D4. Bob would like that too much. No. And we don't have enough female viewers, so whatever. I have no reason to show off my bot on the stream just for Bob's sake. Um, not going to happen. There would take a lot of donations for that. I don't like do exercises and workouts on the stream and stuff like that. So Parallel. Look at this position. Seriously, d4. E takes d4. Queen d4. And then do a mirror image of this position with this Carlson line that Magnus has played with black. e4, b6, d4, bishop e7. It's actually Christian Bauer. Okay, knight c3, e6, knight f3, bishop e4, acerbate. You know what we're talking about here, bishop d3. And now knight f6, queen e2, d5. And basically, the idea is that you take with the queen on d5, which I didn't know about years ago when I had a game with black, my opponent took with a knight. I would have honestly been quite surprised had my opponent played queen takes d5. But compare this position that you see now, right, which is interesting and playable for black, but I believe that white is better here. But compare this position to this position after f6 d4, e takes d4, my alternative, e takes d4, queen takes d4, and suddenly black's position looks kind of stupid. You know, 
Instead of having like a knight on f6 and having some development, I have a pawn on f6 and weaknesses all over the place on the white squares. You know, I mean, this doesn't really look, doesn't really look good to me. That's funny, DK guy. Pretty much the same thing. <laughs> Assume is a different Bob than, than fantasizing, you know. I'm, I'm having really weird deja vu. We have chest dementia and chest deja vu on the stream today. I think I need I need to get more rest. We'll be back tomorrow morning. Um, when you're tired, it's a little bit like you're drunk, you know, and um, maybe I just need some more sleep, but it's fun. You know, on the off topic conversation, the best part of being drunk is the hangover the next day. You know, sometimes I've had the weirdest experiences some of the weirdest, but also even positive experiences. Um, because when you when you have a hangover, you're still like drunk, but you don't have like the total impairment of, um, you don't have the total impairment of actually being completely drunk, you know, and you're kind of like relaxed and I've had some weird things happen. That's how I feel right now. I'm probably being a little bit funnier than, than usual. I'm, I'm a little too serious in most cases, but I'm not drinking, I'm just, uh, I'm just tired. Anyway, e4 is what I decided to play, just like Mysterious Expert here. Keep it closed. It's basically like a French in reverse. f6 is not really... Yeah, I mean, I just had a note here from T-Dark. f6 is strange. It's not that strange. It's strange now. You know, it looks strange now. It looks like, well, why is that move played? f6 and e4 don't really go well together. Okay, but anyways... So ninety two, our hero, the the weird anonymous account I played the other day played knight c three, which is a tn. Then he like went on to play like a positional genius. But frankly, like this is kind of a weird move. You're playing, in a sense, like the most controversial move you can play. It looks like White should be playing c four as Larson did against. No, he didn't play it well. What did Larson play? Bishop a three. Larson must have played knight e2. Okay, knight e2 it's still. Like, we're probably going to play c4. It's a winner where French in reverse here, in case you didn't notice. That's what this guy played. But I was curious about my, my strange opponent on Tuesday. I sort of stopped taking him seriously when he played knight c3, and that was a really, really big mistake. Because after this weird move, he he like played like a genius for the rest of the game. I thought it was it was a strange combination, but anyway. Never underestimate anyone. So Jim decided to play Bishop D seven. I should flip flip. I mean Jim's opponent. Sorry. Yeah, I mean I'm not a huge fan of Bishop D seven. I was tempted to play that with Black in my game too. Jim, I can't get used to the fact that. I don't know if Jim's still here, but I can't get used to the fact that I'm playing a position with black and then we're analyzing it from white side. I keep wanting to refer to Jim's side of the game as my side of the game. Like I'm playing black and he's playing white and I'm trying to annotate from both sides. Mm, missing knight takes d5. Or just saw deeper. Because there's a question about this. Take, take, check, g6, queen takes, knight b4. Mm, not a problem. There's no question there. Is there any question? a6 or something? No. So you have knight takes d5 flat, flat out here. Yeah, this just 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 looks bad. Black's just busted. It's just too weird, you know. I played better than this guy. Much better. But my opponent played knight c3. Anyways. I wouldn't waste time with bishop d7 if I were black. Probably f5. Maybe f5 if I'm gonna play. So it's a good French. 
Wow, and you played bishop a4. So, I gotta move, guys. I don't want you to see my pants, but... Um, what kind of sociopath enjoys hangover? I didn't say enjoyed it exactly. You just haven't had enough experience yet, Mr. Bob. Anyways, bishop a4. Okay, this is protected. The first thing I'm thinking here. One of the first things we play in the French is like takes knight b4. But this is guarded, which is a big problem for black. We don't have any kind of counterplay with that wing gambit style thing. Then you've got to look at like g5, but probably not a good idea. So black's, black's in trouble. He basically just gives up his center. A beautiful position. White center. Maybe you should start playing the French, Jim. He plays this really well. What just happened? We get a gift or something? Someone donate? Mariposa. Aster Bates been talking about Mariposa variation again. He's showing off his Spanish skills. La Mariposa. You don't give credit to COVID-20 for a $5 donation? I didn't see it. $5 donation from COVID-20. Let me see. The scrolling, the scrolling donations. I'm not usually watching. Um, unfortunately, I probably should stream watching the... You know, I should probably stream watching the Streamlabs, but... The window is smaller, so I generally don't keep an eye on the, the streaming donations. And I get so into this analysis Thursday that I sometimes get carried away and don't pay attention to the chat at all, which is what's basically happening. I try to I try to give a good quality stream. I believe in quality, not quantity. COVID, there it is. COVID-20 with a $5 donation. Bob gets extra credit for pointing it out. Thank you, guys. So I had the same criticism for Astrobate today. C5. You know, these are a beautiful thing. The pawns on C4 and D4. I hate to see good pawns that are fluid get stretched out, you know. This is something Jim is aware of. You know, he's aware that this is not ideal structurally. He decided to do it, probably to cut open this diagonal. I don't like it positionally, but it might work. All right. And now we're rolling like rawhide. And he's really patient here. I would be cranking that deep on. It's not going anywhere though. And black has knight a5. Rookie one is probably not a bad move. This has got to be better for white still. I'm frankly a little concerned about our bishop. You know, ultimately, if that happens, we're in big trouble, dude. You know? White could just be like strategically lost really fast here because of just a bad piece. You have bad piece. I don't. You lose. Try not to have bad pieces. So it looks like there's a miscalculation of some sort. I don't really get it. They didn't see it. I wouldn't have seen it either. There's an amazing computer tactic with Bishop H3, but yeah. I'm a little nervous about that queen on h4. Whatever. Knight, bishop. It's a knight. All right. I'm a little nervous about that. That's pretty nasty, actually. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing to protect Jim's king. I guess you could consider, you can consider playing like bishop here, bishop here to defend. White is drifting. Okay, maybe queen d2 is a problem. He, he should play knight d2. Knight d2, e3. 
I'm not sure that that's a big deal, actually. So maybe queen d2. Can we play knight d2? We're just dropping the, the d4 pawn. But I'm getting a little concerned about white's position here. Huh? Why can't you take? Is bishop c6 really bad? So he just didn't take. I mean, frankly, I understand that black has a good square and a diagonal and stuff, but the pawn is kind of a menace. Shouldn't it be, like, eliminated? I'd rather it wasn't there, you know? Um, what's the best move for white? Ooh, d5. You know, honestly, when we go back to rook e4, or rook e1, I wanted to play d5 right away. I would have probably played d5, like, right away, right away, like, right now. I don't like the chance of this pawn getting backward, to be backward, and it's not worth much, but at least our bishop has a little bit more scope. And I probably wouldn't hesitate with d5 so much. But to each his own. I like the idea that he's putting pressure on that pawn. How about knight d2 now? We're just going to drop d4 and then we have nothing. But this is really getting dangerous, dude. What about d5 now? Yeah. Now black is going to migrate with a knight, the other knight, to g6. But you've already pre-defended that. Preheat your oven to 630 or whatever. Preheat oven to, to 420. You can't let him you can't let him come here and like lock down d5. Seriously. This is a double purpose move. He's got transi the transition of the knight over there, and he's got Bishop c6 and just kind of controlling, blockading that, the center. I'll go on record again as saying I didn't like c5. I, I didn't like that move in the first place. Um, all right. So black has a crushing tactic here, which is not surprising. White wasn't careful about his king's side. And then there's some amazing tactic with d5. I guess there's something on the diagonal here. And now we're just gonna be a pawn up with it blockaded. We didn't need that anyway. Just a pawn. I was looking at bishop e6, but that's not a not a move hallucinating that my bishop can go there, right? I guess you can play bishop e4 if you're concerned. But this is where you're just dead. You know, you're probably just dead. Bishop e4, knight e4, knight e5. Queen and like monster outpost knights against bad bishop on b2. This is why I play b3 with white, you know, to get a position like this. There is no way this should happen. Then you, you got to know what you did wrong. If this happens, I'm very concerned about the future because of the move c5. So the lust for d5. He finds the cheapo. Picks off the bishop on f3. Game over. Good job. You've been training with Astrobate again, no doubt. Astrobate would not have missed that. Another lucky win. And now it's just a matter of technique. Jim has never blown a winning position. I thought it was against his religion to play d5, but apparently it's not. Only when the time is right will white play d5. I think around move 33 I'll play d5. Nah. This is over. It's getting a little scary and weird if you're in time pressure now. Go. Go. D6. You saw it. Nice job. Yeah. But it wasn't it wasn't a pretty game. Although there were a lot of interesting strategic points and tactical points, 
the question about C5 for me is very, very formative. Why? I don't want to do this. You know, I like these pawns abreast. I just like them. I just like them like that. You know, I don't want to play C5. Let's have a really good reason to. All right, guys. Um, move 11. Submitting a, yeah, submitting it a little late. I don't know if we're going to get there. So we're way behind schedule. I got Bob up next. We, we got a little birdie in our analysis. Um, smelling food again. I ate my dinner really early. Now there's this yearning for food. Bob, way back there, huh? I went too far again. Why do I always miss Bob? That's weird. There it is, because it's right there. Sir. I like it when you call me sir. Uber driver versus Bob. Wow. Uber driver is obviously working a lot. He hasn't been on the stream forever, guys. Yeah, we're not going to address that. Sir. I'm only 40. I'm 39. Sorry. 39, Bob. Not old enough. Sorry. Um, C4. D4. D4 from the Uber driver. Uber driver is brutal. What is this? Do I, I'm not going to look at the result. Let's not look at the result. Let's not be results oriented. D4, D5. Yeah, the arena. D takes C4, E3. The gutsy move here is E4. But, you know, it takes a lot of theoretical knowledge. Uber driver isn't that sharp style, really. He doesn't play like Uber. Okay. Let's choose a different word. He doesn't play like super sharp stuff. Um, I like E3. That's what I play as well. Knight F6. It's nice to see you play the accepted. I've actually been thinking about playing the Queen's Gambit accepted. I've always to toyed with it, with black, but never really played it much over the board. You can also play C5 directly, I think. I don't think there's any problem with that, though I don't know if there's a real benefit in playing C5 immediately. There are tricky lines if you want to be fancy, you can try to you can try to probably get in something quick on the queen side before you even play e6. But it probably would only work against some weak players. To pull a fast one with a quick queen side expansion with a6 and b5 somehow gaining time. I don't know. This looks like a normal move. You break with c5, castles. So here there's a lot of different setups. You know, there's a traditional question of where this knight should go. Um, as I said, I'd like to play the Queen's Gambit Accepted. I don't know enough about the theory, particularly in this main line. I have played quite a bit with like Bishop G4 type systems. So, well, this particular line, I must have played um, either Knight C6 or I must have played A6 here. And, and I've had some games with like Knight F3, Bishop G4. Now that loses. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't played many Queen's Gambit accepted games, maybe two or three or four, you know, at the most. I guess I never got a proper line. In this variation, I never faced, I guess I just never faced E3, honestly. Um, the other option, Bob, is E5. Maybe that's the best move. But it's aggressive. You have to be very wary about your F7 pawn. The end game is not a problem. Like, this is okay. Although, maybe Nefidov would play d takes e5. Um, White should probably maintain that pawn on d4. But you've got to be able to play a sharp uh, kind of IQP position. And be careful. This is a Petrov. It's a Queen's Gav accepted. It's like uh, three or four different openings. But that's considered by the Cognoscenti as the most aggressive way to play against e3. 
a5 not going to work here. So anyway, all right, knight f6 here, take e3, c5, whatever. Knight c6 is a move, but I think it's more, it's more fun to play a6. You probably want to put your knight on d7, not to get in the way. Rubenstein was a big connoisseur of the Akiba Rubenstein, you know, who was almost world champion. He was a big connoisseur of both sides of the lost a pen. Bob, can you crawl under the table and get that? Um, just kidding. I just want to fulfill Bob's fantasies to see what, what kind of pants I have. Here's the pen. But anyway, um, a6, a little bit of jest. a6, b5. Rubenstein pointed out that the knight on d7 is better placed. Very appropriate. Better placed than the knight on c6 because that doesn't interfere with our play in the long diagonal. Rubinstein played with white a lot of times. These Queen's Gambit accepted reversed as well. You can play it, believe it or not, with the white pieces. Um, out of the semi, semi Tarash sometimes. But anyways, you're committed to knight c6 now. I'm not sure. What is this? It's kind of a weird move coming from Uber Driver, of all people, who knows so much classical chess. This is apparently a mistake. Paco Vallejo, Vallejo would play knight a5 here. That was his favorite move. We've had QGA Blitz games back in the day. He would not miss his theme. This is Gelfand and Arkiev. Oh, Gelfand actually played this with white? What? What was Gelfand thinking? Could Gelfand possibly have chest dementia? There's a strong possibility. He is older than me. What is Gelfand like early? Is he like 50? Gelfand is clearly getting chest dementia to allow this variation. I don't like it. D5 is not correct. It's not correct. He's hoping that you take, and you did what he, you did what he wanted you to do. After this, now he's expecting you to take. Probably you should take. It's a strong knight on d five. White just fixes this bishop here, and then he'll play e four, and just sort of cement the control of d five. It's not an exciting line, but white is slightly better. It's like central majority versus queenside majority. Not a lot of fun to play. You did an interesting thing now. You played bishop e6. Probably not bad. I don't really understand what's wrong with bishop e6. Maybe white has some really perverse move with e4. That would be that would be nasty if e4 works. If white has e4, you're in trouble. I'm going to turn off the engine. It, it feels like e4. Oh man, you could get annihilated on the e-file. Levan, Levan Aronian. Aronian will play e4 instantly. Oh man. So bishop e7 is okay. Like you can give that bishop. This is not a big deal, no problem. That's all right, have my bishop, whatever. My position is okay. But this move here with bishop e6, I mean, I don't see any problem, right? With knight f6, whatever. It's this move. Poison pawn, beat down control of d5, and the threat of bishop f4, possibly bishop g5, but mostly bishop f4. This actually looks really scary. So you have to take the pawn. I mean, they're just rookie one, actually. You're probably done. Stick a fork in him. Black is done. Knight a5? Yeah. You play knight a5 at some point before you resign, Warnaki. This looks like a really bad situation. I'm not feeling too healthy about Black's king position here. So, Bob violated 
primary fundamental rule. When the opponent has a piece in your territory, in your face, in the center, what do you do? You trade it off. You trade it off, especially when it's a higher rated opponent. Bob is trying to play with this knight in his face on d5. It's just a matter of time until something bad happens. Trade it off now, you know, before it gets worse. Absolutely. Now, Uber driver is a little bit better, but it's not that bad. But after bishop e6, you are in serious trouble after e4. So Uber didn't find it. Now he has nothing. This is nothing, though. Black might be better. At least in practic practical chances, black is better. I mean, the queen side majority is more likely to promote than, than the king side majority here. Really gross passive move, a3. Uber driver was Ubering too much before he played this game. All right, I don't mind rook c8. I think the d-file is overrated. Good judgment, good judgment by Bob. A lot of beginners automatically just, oh, open file, it's so not, not so important here, really. The most important thing is your queen side majority. So this is excellent judgment by Uber driver. I mean, Bob, b5, not automatically just grabbing the open file. Rook d1, and then you played it anyway. All right, I don't mind rook d8. Maybe we take with the bishop. Maybe you take with a rook. Well, I mean, whatever. I mean, I don't think Uber driver should probably even exchange rooks. He's on. He's uncomfortable here. Black is slightly better. You have a majority on the queen side. Now you have control of the open file. Maybe you should double up, dude. I don't know. I said the file wasn't important, but now the opportunity presents itself. I mean, I I really don't mind preventing him from coming to the open file. If he's gonna force me to take control of the open file, then then so be it, you know? Obviously you have other moves, maybe b4. Black is definitely better here. But after rook d1, he's groveling for a draw. Yes, now it's there. Nothing like groveling for a draw against the bob. Stopping a5. A pivotal moment in the game. Now perhaps Bob could play bishop d8, but I'm a little nervous about the undefended, almost undefended nature of that move. Bishop d8. You went for exchanges. Uber driver's got the solid technique. You're still better. Good move, centralizing. Offer the draw. Did who offered the draw here, Bob? It must have been Uber Driver. You don't offer draws, right? Uber Driver. He's professional offering draws. This is a good judgment. You did. Wow. No, man. You're better here. I mean, the queen side majority. His king is close enough to the center that he's... He can probably hold... But I'm not normally excited to take a draw here with Black. Maybe you would lose in the end game. He's an experienced player. Um, all right, so that was a solid effort. Some interesting stuff there that we learned. He could have wasted you with e4. Okay. Stefanos, Olaf Meister, welcome to the stream. I do not accept challenges. We're just analyzing subscriber games. So we've got a few left, Steph Stephanos. I don't think Stephanos is here, is he? You guys can catch the, the stream, of course, on my YouTube channel, all the replays via YouTube, video chess training on YouTube. One of the reasons we keep that going. So don't forget to like and subscribe over on YouTube as well. Stephanos, where are, where are you? Here, here's a game in the Royal Lopez, Spanish game. Stefanos versus Gonzalez. Gonzalez 12, 1911. It was a good year. I gotta love the Spanish. Bishop b5, a6. It's out of fashion 
because of two reasons. The, the Berlin defense, number one, and the Marshall Gambit. Two major problems for white in the Spanish that are almost like insoluble. I mean, it's causing people to stop playing bishop b5 at this point. So a6, bishop a4, knight f6, castles, whatever, rook e1, and then black play d6. So we won't see a marshal, you know. Um, if black castles, you got to make a decision with white if you're going to play c3 and allow the marshal gambit or not. That's another question. I think the marshal gambit is good, but like a lot of aggressive openings, it's probably just like a forced draw, objectively. There comes a point in all aggressive openings, like the Sveshnikov, the Marshall Gambit, where it's like, maybe it's like a forced draw. It's almost like not good to play it if you want to win. White will just memorize some long variation that's basically like a forced draw against the Marshall. It stops being a good winning weapon because there's all these draw variations where White just like chickens out um, instead of going and say like the most sharp or dynamic stuff. But anyway, a topic for another time. D6, C3, castles H3, bishop B7. So. Bishop e7 isn't really popular, you know, it seems like. It, it was in the 90s when Karpo was playing, but this this side separation has kind of gone out of fashion. Everybody's playing the Chigorin, and it's it seems good. Surprised by the highest rated games here with knight a5. Knight b8. It's kind of strange that you don't see a lot of games in, in recent years. Black has so many different options. Anyway, let's take a look. So bishop b7, d4, rook e8, knight b2. Of course, you can play knight g5. It's a draw by repetition. If black and white want to agree, knight on bd2, bishop f8, and now d5. Um, anybody who lived through the karpov kasparov matches probably, you know, has to be a big fan of these lines. There were so many epic games in the match, especially in 1990, that we were just like watching and in awe of these awesome um, tense battles between those guys. A4 is the main line. D5 releases the tension in the center. I don't really know much about this move. I've always, you know, played A4. Probably I played a3 in some offhand game. But I don't remember ever playing d5 with white. I suppose this is possible. So normally when you play d5 early or too early in, in a variation where black hasn't played c5, black will have the avail available c6 break later on to destroy your center. That's the problem with playing d5. Oftentimes if you play d5, you know, when black plays c5, okay, the game becomes completely closed. You have to keep in mind, when you choose to do this, black will eventually break with, with c6. Then it becomes a question about, you know, well, can you maintain control of, say, the d5 square? How about queen c2? It's a bad square. It's like playing queen c7 in the king's Indian. It's pretty similar. The queen just, it's kind of cramped here. It's... It's a very strange move. This is one of those Indonesian guys. There were there were conspiracies. I think he's legit, but there were conspiracy tournaments in Indonesia. I think Megarawanto was one of them that they got like suddenly twenty six hundred or twenty five fifty. Um, but no, it's not a good square. No, the queen doesn't really go anywhere. For the time being, typically. Bishop c two is okay. Yeah, I guess you could play it. You could play it, but I mean, it could be vulnerable to getting hit by knight b4. The rook is not as well protected here. It just looks kind of artificial. It also takes away the bishop's retreat square. I mean, couldn't black just play like knight a5? Actually, right away. Am I missing something? <laughs> Megar Wanto versus Erwanto. Um... Yeah, that looks like a real game. Why can't black just play knight a5, dude? What is white doing? 
White did lose. <laughs> but I mean, seriously, like, well, what about my bishop? I don't understand. Okay, anyways. D5, knight B8, knight F1, knight, knight D7, no. H6. I'm not a huge fan of A6, as you guys can imagine. Um, don't like making unnecessary weakening moves. I'm also not sure, like, this is a threat. I'm not sure this is a threat. I guess it gives the knight a square to go to. It's a generally played move, like h6 and g6 oftentimes. Eh, probably not bad. But I, I guess he wants to... I guess he does want to stop knight g5. Maybe it's like pro prophylaxis for c6. The idea is that you want to play c6, but in the event of takes, you want to be able to meet knight g5 against the double threat against f7. Though even there, black could probably play rook e7 to hold f7. Um... So h6, knight g3, and then c6. This was the plan. Camel Mitan against Karpov, 2007. Caruana Karpov, 2008. All nothing for white. Okay, I don't mean to be like, you know, a know-it-all, but I, I don't think that d5 is a great line, personally. You should keep the tension here. I feel it, you know, I just feel it. Like, it's never really good to go d5. It's kind of like hopping out. But maybe there's a better way to play it. Let's see. Knight f1, h6. So here, like, knight h2 was played in most games. See the difference? Knight h4, f5 is an interesting idea, of course. But the difference with knight h2 is that what we're doing is we're playing for d5, in a sense. Knight g3 defends the e4 pawn, but it can be kind of boxed out by g6. But knight h2 is kind of Michael Adams-y, yeah, knight, like a Joko, a Joko Piano maneuver. But you're playing for knight g4, maybe? To trade that off and get control of d5? I don't know. It's not that big a deal, probably. Black has another knight coming to d7. Actually, I just don't think that white really has an advantage here. Nothing you can do but take. And now, I don't really know. Maybe the bishop takes to keep knight d7, you know, more like a knight orf, is better. Now, the knight is a problem. Again. It can go here or it can go here. That's pretty ugly. I don't want to put my knight on b7. That is not happening. Maybe you can get away with it. Knight, knight here. If you get to c5, I feel like it's probably better just to play knight c4 and put the knight on b6. There is a problem with the f5 square. We can't let the knight sit there. Dude. Dude. Can we play king h7 now? Pronto. This is starting to look kind of scary. Yeah, I don't like those knights there. It's not healthy. It's getting scary. Obviously, g6 is not on. Yeah, this attack is looking pretty real. Black still hasn't achieved d5, and even if he could, his knight is hanging out on a5. d5 would liberate that. Things have gone seriously, seriously wrong here for black. This is probably a reasonable try, but positionally black is like lost now if you just give up on d5. Even if white doesn't checkmate you. Good luck against Michael Adams, like if you don't have the d5 square. Um, subtle. Very subtle. Good choice. Man, nice move now by white. Nice move now by white. 
He doesn't just take with the queen. I mean, this is better for white, of course. But pawn takes with deadly threats here. D5 is still gone. Okay, I think you have to try D5. I mean, what else are you going to play? How bad is F6? Is there any chance for survival if we play d5? Bishop g6, f g6, queen g6. Masturbate. f7, and queen g8 mate. <clears throat> so black is lost. You got no, you've got no f6. You've got no d5. This is the only move, but he's positionally lost. So this, this is not that bad. <laughs> if you have d5, I think that black is just lost strategically. Even if we don't have a mate, you know, there's just no way he can survive with that bishop on f8. It's over. So it's probably better that he lost through some sort of direct attack. Better to just get it over with. It ended up happening anyway. Nice. 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 And mate there on g8. So that's a beautiful thing. All right, good game. But very instructive, very simple. Classic. It was funny how quickly black went wrong there. Um, guys, I only have like 25 minutes left. So we're going to try to get in these last three games as fast as possible. Don't forget, tomorrow I am streaming, Friday morning. I don't know how I wake up for these things at 11 o'clock. Um, it's 11, 11 a.m. CET, blitz, super fast, five plus three. All right, what's up? Rook G3, Mornaki with A5. Submission here. Hello there, sleeveless master. You know how hot it is? Are you? <laughs> where are you? Here in a game where I got destroyed by Master Blobix. Notice the complete soundness of the opening. Master Blobix. Composition master. So this is Warnaki's new favorite opening. He finds that playing knight c6 early helps him to Strengthen a5, I guess. Is that the idea? With this move, you're strengthening your control of a5. Speaking of knight a5 is out of the action. It's so important to play d4. I mean, seriously. If you want to punish this move, which you must. You must. You must punish this move. Punish. Just don't. Does anybody know the answer to my trivia question? I didn't even. Just don't. Just don't. Please. You remember? Bob Bob might remember. Please. Just. Please don't. Just don't. This was said to me by. No. Said to the spectators. Spectators watching my game. With one Grandmaster opponent. It's a great ad campaign. I'm going to adopt this phrase I'm going to turn it into a meme please just don't no one no one no one recent it's a, it's a it's a it's a player from the past I'm that old whopping whopping that's when I ruined with Jorge Samor Hasbun he was using like hand sanitizer for hair gel. He'd be in good shape today. That was his favorite phrase. Whopping. Whopping, man. So knight f3, e5. Probably my favorite from Jorge was you touch it, you move it, you break, you pay. We'll have to incorporate that into the stream too. 
That was his his classic standby. Touch move rule. Knight f3, e5. Bishop e5. Knight f6, the Berlin defense. Tony Miles is in the house. Tony Miles and Warnaki have a lot in common. They both play knight c6, so they can transpose to the Berlin. Miles did that against me. Like, you've got such a creative move on move one, and then you're just, like, going into that. But Miles, he loved weird openings, and he also loved end games. I think we had a draw. The old days of um, the World Chess Network. Not too many people around still remember that. The early 2000s. <laughs> Poor Bob was still in diapers. D4, and now what? Okay, white played d4. I don't know anything about d4. Played Miles a lot. And we had a lot of... Um, we had a lot of, like, banter text. <laughs> banter games by text. God, it's sad that they're all, all, like, gone. It'd be awesome to have the text from those games, let alone, like, the game scores. Once I beat him, my only win... He beat me several times, but I beat him once. There were some couple draws. He probably beat me like four to one with a couple of draws. Three or four to one with a couple draws. But I did win a really crushing game against him. This was a draw. But I knew he was like dangerous in the Berlin defense, so I was extra careful with white. I went into the end game, the end game line. But I had seen him like waste people in over the board games. Miles was one of the people who actually brought this this opening to popularity that we see today. Um, well, I mean, Miles should still be alive. You know, he's not that old. He died young because of diabetes. He basically should still be alive today. I mean, by no means should he be gone. It's a tragedy, you know. D4. So, I don't know anything about this line, actually. Never played it for either side. All I know, all I know is that it's not really supposed to be dangerous. But that's not the right answer. You, you didn't really, you're not addressing what's going on here, you know? I mean, this is a really, <laughs> basically, he's just almost Kasparov, Bob. Um, no, there was this like train wreck in the center of the board and Warnaki's playing a6. That doesn't make sense, you know? You just played it like an automatic move, like weighted castle or something. I don't know, man. I mean, even against the four knights, this is a dubious move, as far as I know. But white is like upping the ante. I'm raising you $500, you know? And you're like, whatever. Just a6. I don't care. You know, I mean, dude's going to take your pawn on e5. This is an extremely impudent move. I mean, I understand, like, his e4 pawn is still hanging. So theoretically, like, you might not lose a pawn. But, I mean, you got to look at the position holistically. When they attack the center here... It feels like you have to react. You know, you probably have to play pawn takes pawn. There's just no other good move. I mean, this looks dangerous, frankly, without even looking at the opening explorer. It just looks dangerous. Like, I don't really want to do that. Looks like it is okay, according to the opening explorer. This feels right. Eliminate the offending pawn. I've seen this line. I guess you're supposed to play ninety four. So a six is kind of crazy. Let's see. So what? Wow. This is Blobix playing white, and he played bishop a four. So all right, Blobix doesn't really like end games. Bishop takes c six. Can we take with a b pawn?
Not 100% convinced about this. How bad is this? It's probably not good, but the other option to take with a D-pawn? What if he takes with a knight? Is that nothing? Like knight takes e4? Is there nothing for white here? Knight f7? No, nothing tricks. Queen e2. Oof, you're walking the tightrope after queen e2. Oh my god. Bishop f5. Yeah, have fun with that. Have fun with that position, trying to play that. Blavix didn't want anything to do with it. He wanted to transpose to something he knew, so he played bishop a4. And you guys have transposed to, you know, like like you had played a6 and bishop a4 before. Yeah, don't play a6 anymore. And now d6. Wernaki's basically playing without theory. I wonder if you can play b5 here. <clears throat> You're still supposed to just take. This is another standard variation that I don't know very well. Because I never played either side. Alright. But d6, again, Blavix doesn't even try to take advantage of some exceptional move. But this is clearly just losing. You just take here. That is a serious blunder. I mean, the other move is speculative. But now it's just like losing a pawn. You are just losing a pawn. Because you can't take this pawn on e4. That's that's just too dangerous. I'm sure about it. The, the file would just be deadly. I mean, you probably have to try it, but I don't know. I don't. I want to close my eyes. There has to be something here for white. I am not playing this with black ever. No way. Um, all right. So Blavix didn't challenge it. You transpose to a normal line. You should just play the Steinitz in the first place. You guys are making me... Now I'm wondering if this is a known line. Can you play queen takes queen? Rook takes queen? There's some variation with like queen takes queen, rook takes queen, bishop takes e4. And then... Wait has some insane move like bishop h6 or something. But it, the point is that you should be able to play queen takes queen here. And then try to get your pawn back, dude. He has to take with a rook. And then it's the question of whether you can take the pawn on e4 or not. I remember a very, very old analysis that had something to do with white playing bishop h6, like giving away a piece. But, I mean, it doesn't make any sense here. There must be a different position. So you simply take... That's it, right? I mean, what's what's up? Bishop e4, knight e4, knight e4. White has some kind of microscopic advantage. I feel like we're on a TV cop show. So this has actually happened, Victor Frias against Biasius from 1981. Man, White has no wins from this position, sadly. So Blavix isn't supposed to exchange on c6. How could there be so few games from this position? This looks like it would happen every day. You just didn't take the pawn back, which is nuts. So you can just play bishop e4, and everything's okay. I mean, I think that white is a tiny bit better. I agree with the engine here. You know, really, really good grinder would make something out of this for white, but it's not much to work with. Kramnik could win somehow with white. But you can't do this. You just can't do it. You just lose. You just lost on a one-move mistake. Now it's over. Bishop f4 is kind of an aggressive move, but we have similar themes to the game with Nefidov. Like, if you play f3, then bishop c5 check. Maybe it's a good move to play bishop f4. f3. You damage his structure, but this endgame 
This doesn't really matter so much. You know, you're lost on the king side. And Blavix has a better minor piece. An excellent position for the bishop. Um, and this is just like a bad move too. You're making your position worse, I think, by playing g6, weakening more dark squares. This is almost impossible to defend for black anyway. You're probably just lost. I don't see much chance here. Lost a lot of stuff. Game over. Master Blobix. Master Shredder. Tribute to Blobix. We haven't seen him in a little while. Hope he's alright. Generously. Trading pieces with you. Game over. No, no. You gotta be more careful in the opening, Mornaki. You gotta be more thoughtful in the opening. It's fine to play creative stuff, but you gotta know a little bit more theory. I mean, you got away with A6, probably. You can get away with that, but... Like, two weird moves is too much. You can only have so much latitude or leverage, you know, to play weird moves when you're black. But finally, you ended up with a normal position. Blobix was, like, blitzing off the opening moves or something. I don't know what he was doing here. He was berserking. And after this, okay, we get to some position where he just, like, unprovoked exchanged on c6. Unprovoked exchange on c6. I don't know if he's afraid of like b5, b4 or something. I'm just shocked how few games are actually played from this position. It almost can't can't happen because the move order is so strange. Okay, guys, last two. Um, quickly, Mr. Coffee, move 11. Each have five minutes to show me their stuff. Excel Poker, subscribe with Twitch Prime. Thank you, man. Good to see you. Another strong player who's been here on the stream before. We're just wrapping up soon. But we're, you can catch the last two two games we're going to go over quickly. How have you been, man? I hope the lockdown is tre treating you well. They still have the Budapest Saturday Live tournaments. Oh, they do, but not now, you know. It's been canceled since the global virus. I don't like the first Saturday tournaments being held in this hotel. It's in Buda in a really bad location. It's whatever. I mean, I don't want to go over there. It takes me like, it takes me like 40 minutes to go like one way um, with traffic and it's congested. I, I don't even want to play anymore. They used to have the tournaments in Pest and it was in much better, we really like viable location more in the center and that's cool. But I don't like it being like out of the way, some weird place. Um, but the tournaments do exist. They'll probably come back once um, once the virus is over. He wants to start his tournaments up again. Yeah, it's been going on for a very long time. All right, so Mr. Coffee, one of the main reasons why I moved here, the availability of tournaments, um, strong you know, tournaments. I could play almost nonstop. I never traveled that much in Europe. I could play Grandmaster-level tournaments every month in the same country, you know, not a lot of places where you can do that. So c4, e6, knight f3, knight f6, d4. Coffee is black against Shredder. Shredder classic. Knight on bd2. Professional move castles. I kind of like d5. I find it getting a fair share of the center. But basically... Who was it I lost against? Castles. Maybe Erdos. A couple years ago, I played played Castles with him. But um, there is no easy answer against Nino BD2 Bogo. You know, this is probably White's best move, but it's a subtle variation. And it takes a really, really strong player to, to play it with the white pieces. Shredder. I mean, E3 is, is solid, but... Um, no, I mean, E3 seems right. There are other ways for white to play. Queen C2, I think. Another interesting move. So E3, D5. Now Mr. Coffee plays D5. 
we transpose back into kind of normal lines. Oftentimes you have to give up your bishop for very little, or you pull it back and kind of lose a tempo. The only thing for black here that makes it okay is the fact that the knight isn't very well placed on d2. Move 11 knows all the... He knows all the... Um, all the local New York chess masters. Figler passed away some years ago. When I was cleaning out my, my mom's house when she died, I found something I totally forgot. I got this letter from Ilya Fiegler, like thanking me for something I helped him um, years ago. I had completely forgot about it. Bishop d3, b6, castles, bishop b7, b3, knight on bd7, bishop b2, rook c8. Now, Mr. Coffee, wow, Vitugov Coffee. This all looks very normal to me. It's funny that white has omitted a3 for so long. Against me, you played a5. That's different, Wernaki. That's against bishop d2. I would never play a5 against knight d2. Well, I mean, I feel like, okay, you know, he hasn't really... The, the one thing that bothers me the most in these type of lines is when white grabs space with a3 and b4. That's the thing that makes me very uncomfortable. If white gets in a3 and b4 and gets kind of like a spatial crunch on the queen side, I never know what to do. You know, if you play c5, white can like take on c5 and play b5. It's possible that the diagonals open up. I have a kind of bad score with both colors in this type of position, frankly. But honestly, you see like a3 is by far the most common move, grabbing space. Like look at bishop e7. I'm not loving this position. You know, I don't want to have this against like Yasser, the black side of this line. It's no fun for black, you know? I mean, that's why you have to go back to the drawing board. The Bogo is tough. After knight on bd2, I would look at every option here for black if I was preparing to play again. c5 seems to have problems. Castles has its problems. But maybe the best line, can we play b6? Yeah. I think I prefer b6, dude. And just, just give him the bishop if he wants it. I mean, I'm gonna put my bishop on b7. I probably like this the best. No fun for black, it's 80% of my games, it's similar. Yeah, I know the feeling. That's why I mix in other stuff, not just the BOGO. I don't like Knight on BD2. I've been playing a lot of D5. Okay, guys, almost time to wrap it up. Thanks for your support. We're going to take a quick look at how this played out. So you got a very standard position. White didn't try to play B4. If he doesn't try to play B4, I don't think he gets much. White's just playing, like, safely. This turns out to be a really incisive move by Mr. Coffee, like Rook C8. That looks kind of efficient. Just knows where the game is. I mean, C5. It's like Mr. Coffee versus Mr. Coffee. Mr. Coffee also plays the Queen's Indian lines with like E3. He's playing Kali system style stuff with white. It's like playing himself. Now A3. You don't have any problems here. Knight B5 is impossible. And see how the knight is misplaced on D2? That's the difference, dude, between, you know, the Queen's Indian position and this. That knight sucks on D2. You don't have access to knight c3, knight b5, or rolling it over to e2 and over to the king side. It's just, just badly placed. So the engine like rook e8, you're playing a Kali Zuckertort with colors reversed. Mr. Coffee getting kind of aggressive against Shredder there. I would be more cautious, honestly. The Karpovian rook c7, I'm not saying I would find that move, but... Mr. Coffee going for c5, first of all. You don't have to play that, you know. I mean, you don't have to, to be the aggressor, although I understand like he might play b4. Maybe you felt like you want to get it in before he can play b4. I guess, seriously, if rook e8 is b4 a problem, you just, yeah, I, I don't like that. Once I lost a game, 
similar structure. You have to play like c6 before white plays b5. So that if he plays b5, then you play c5. It's kind of awkward. You wouldn't think this is better for black, but the engine thinks it's better for black. I don't feel comfortable. Yeah, okay, c5. Black's okay, but this feels like a really aggressive move too. I would be scared, even if it's Shredder Classic. Can you, can you make a waiting move here of some constructive ilk, like Queen E7? I wish, yeah, I wish he didn't have moves like this. He might be able to play Bishop A6 or take advantage of your white square weaknesses in some way. Once I lost to Humpy Kungaroo, I remember. Vaguely, vaguely familiar. It was a position like this where I was black. It was an E3 Queen's Indian. And I guess she got me to like overextend myself or something. I think I started doing like F5, G5, and then it all didn't work out. I basically, you know, started to do like a, a Stonewall Dutch. Somehow she just like negated everything. She just escaped. A4, it's the closest thing to A5 we've got, Warnaki. Sorry. I don't really know about this. We're, we're monitoring the E5 square. We're threatening what? Knight G4? That doesn't look right. Again, I, I mean, I feel like Queen E7 looks like a normal move. I've retired from playing engines. H3 is probably a bad move, but he wants to stop Knight. It wants to stop Knight G4. This is a handicap computer that White's what's playing white here. But these things are just not well perfected. I don't like playing any computers. And Mr. Coffee takes with the knight. Why are you taking with the knight? I don't like a4. That weaken white's queen side. It's a computer. It's starting to make stupid moves. A handicap program. But why not you take with a pawn? You've got the beautiful pawns. Nothing like hanging pawns. I prefer the hanging pawns to the to the isolated pawn, man. I mean, I think they're better. It's like, if they're in the same family, but they're healthier than an isolated pawn. Don't fear the hanging pawns. What are you guys talking about? Wave and blow kisses. Anyway, guys, we're... Um, I remember a game I lost. It has a little bit of personality to the stream. Flagellant. Is that what you said? <laughs> um, adjective. Whatever. An interesting adjective to choose. Anyway. This is a long game, Coffee. Can you pick a longer one to go over? I don't like taking with, with the pawn, dude. White is an awesome square here. This is, this is, that's a huge asset for white, I think. I don't want to play f4 if I don't have to with white. Playing a handicap level computer is a frustrating experience. You don't really know what you're getting. This pawn is weak. Man. I don't like this. It didn't really play badly. A few like slightly inferior moves. Am I missing something in the chat? Now I, I feel like I'm missing something. This is awful, Mr. Coffee. I think we're busted. The B4 pawn is hanging. Is there nothing we can do? I blame it all on, on playing, not accepting the hanging pawns, dude. Plus 1.6. This is where I resign in the simul game or against the computer. Alice 
outpost knight on c6. That's horrible. Man, white is everything here. You seriously can defend this. Wow. I didn't think it was possible. White is super better, even just like B5. There it is. Yeah, I don't really understand like surrendering an open file, but I guess he's just gonna play knight c6, so it doesn't matter. Extremely strong handicap mode. What? So, I mean, you can't play rook a8 here? Does it seriously hang on somehow? Does Mr. Coffee seriously hang on here? You have knight d7? Nah. Nah. Here. Takes. 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 Oh, no. Knight c5. Sorry, I sound like Blue Velvet or something. I'm just getting tired. Um, don't mean to be Dennis Hopper. But um, still plus point one, one point three. Not fun, dude. This is awful, dude. G4 is not a bad move, actually. The computer was forced to defend its pawn on a4, sort of give up ground. Oh, a6 is even evil. I don't really like that either. Man, this thing is brutal, dude. I wouldn't play this thing. This is just not good for you to get beat down like this. It's pretending it's a weak player, but it's not. It's like toying with you. And now you win the pawn. Mr. Coffee. Is it a draw somehow? What just happened? What just happened here? So it's playing for mate. You're suddenly getting mated. And you had to play f5 to not get mated. Oh my god, white's winning. Jesus, white was winning. So, his pawn sack was actually sound. It was never in danger of losing. It has so much space that it's okay. And now you're actually lost after this move. Oof. Yeah, that pawn is a killer. On the six, two connectors, game over. No, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I still don't like playing these, these computers. I think it's just an artificial game and, and it feels like it's gonna make you trigger happy, I mean, trigger happy? No, what was I looking for the word? Gun shy, close to trigger happy. It's the opposite of, of trigger happy, gun shy. So that's chest dementia at nine o'clock. I can't think of the right word. Mr. Coffee's gonna be gun shy if he plays this, this engine. You know, I, I think he's got nothing else to do though. It's locked down. It's hard to find an opponent in the house that's why we have the internet, though, Mr. Coffee. You ought to play with some people instead. Definitely better. It is hard to do, though. This thing is, is killing you here. All right, last quick look at Mr. Move 11. Mr. Move 11. Last game, guys. Got to run. My chest dementia is acting up again. If there's time, I'll, I'd like to look at game four, 57 World Championship match. Smyslav Bonfini, favorite of mine. Smyslav leading 2-1 when this game was played. So, we're going to go through quickly with light notes. But Vinik tried playing the... So, he tried playing the French against Smyslav unsuccessfully, then switched to the Karo Khan. There weren't many Sicilians, for whatever reason. Stream again tomorrow, 11 a.m. CEST. Thanks, Bob. 
So again, I like Bodvinik. He played the classical Sicilian, as I do. But I don't know why he did not choose to play the Sicilian much against Smyslav. I mean, I don't think of Smyslav as that deadly against the Sicilian. He was particularly deadly against the French. And that, that Bodvinik learned um, pretty well. Carol Khan worked out fine. I like Bavinic's Sicilian, actually, and I think he should have played it more. E6, maybe that I'm just biased because it's one of my favorite openings. This is like a mainline um, rouser. Castle's queenside, h6. This is still played a lot today. Now bishop b3. The other move is bishop f4. Once I saw a game, once I saw a rigged game between two grandmasters in this line, not going to name any names. An arrangement. Bishop e3, bishop d7, f3, b5. They'll kill me. Queen f2, queen c7, bishop d3, bishop e7, queen g3, g6. So everything looks normal to me until g6. Wells recommends they take c6 first, then bishop f4. I mean, Wells' book is 20 years old. Like, I, I I was confident in that book 20 years ago, but I don't know what's happening now. Um, it was a good book at the team. At the team. Knight takes c6 by, followed by bishop f4. Let's see. Right. So h6, knight takes c6, b takes c6, bishop f4. This is a different line altogether, though. Yeah. So this is yet another possibility. Carlson versus Viagra. Nah. That's yet another possibility. Don't know. Don't ask me. Um, okay, bishop e3 is a line. And this is the idea. So we basically turned it, it's just an English attack. The problem for black is that in the English attack, Nidorfs, number one, h6 is not a move you necessarily want to play. Number two, in the kind of Nidorf, let's say, you know, you wouldn't really always want your bishop on, on d7. But it's a rouser, not a, not a Nidorf. This, this is going to cause some congestion. Black needs to trade pieces here. I had a game with, with Fogarashi once, I remember, in a line like this. I wonder if I even played this line. Something similar, but slightly different, I think, with bishop e7 instead of h6. Yeah, it doesn't look like white has anything here. It just doesn't look like white has anything here. But ultimately for black, the problem is if you castle, white has an instant attack. That's the problem. So you need to attack white without castling first. Yeah, but g6 looks ugly. It really does. I don't know what choice you have. King f8. And you know, maybe king f8 is not so stupid. f4 instead of f3. It's a different position. And f4 would be good. Like, um, we're we just looking at. Like, if my e4 pawn were, were solidly protected, yeah, I'd like to play f4. But it's not so easy to achieve that. That's happening more, Wernaki, in these lines with like bishop g5 where like white's exchanging and black's taking back with the pawn. In the rouser lines where bishop g5, bishop f6, g takes f6, then white plays like f4 and he tries to f like flex the center with f5 or whatever. You know, that's that's a very typical thing. But here we can't really play f4. We don't have enough protection over e4. White's setup is like an English attack. The plan is to play g4, g5. But here, Smyslav, I don't really like g6, you know? What about king f8? I mean, is this stupid? 
The engine wants to play g6 anyway. It just crawled the king over there. It likes king f8. See? Then we can play h5. I'm a genius. I invented a new move. I'm not sure if they analyzed that in the game, but I like king f8 better than g6. Don't like g6. b4 was played. It still doesn't answer the question though. What, what are we gonna do when this is hanging now? The same, same problem arises here, g6. But I'm not sure I like chasing the knight to a good square. You know, the chances are the knight is actually less harmful to black's health on c3 than it is on somewhere like f4 or d4. Oftentimes when you're black in the rouser, you don't want to play b4 necessarily if you're going to just chase that knight to a better position. The fact of the matter is it's not hurting anyone on c3. So I like king f8. Um, all right, g6, king b1, like very safe move, and then castles queenside. Yeah, I mean, this was his plan to cast the queen side, but I don't know, man. I just feel very nervous about casting the queen side with these pawns pushed up. I've done it, but I wonder if it's too late to play king f8 just manually with the king on g7. Totally okay, according to the engine. You don't have to do it right away, but the possibility to play king f f8 g7 could solve some problems later on. I think castle's queenside is dangerous. It looks really dangerous. But it's played in the rouser. You can even see like Magnus games. He's played rouser games with black, great castle, queenside. It happens. It's a move. Queen f2, king b7. I must have seen this game at some point. Yeah, anyway, the knight like voluntarily comes back to e2. <laughs> B4 was certainly a bad move in that other game. Now we stop it with E5, and then boink, it jumps back out to here, maybe A5, bishop D2, and then you're gonna be like, oh, I wish I hadn't put my king on B7. Black is gonna try to play D5. There it is. I think I've seen this show before. That's the problem when you've seen, you've seen games, but you kind of forgot about it. So take, take. Uh, I don't know. If White had something, he messed it up. Nibar here played e5 against the 2297. What's that about? He's like, why not? I'll just play e5. You got nothing, boy. I mean, he's just got nothing. I guess you got nothing. Either way, like you can just play e5. That's cool. Okay. Nibor plays e5 and <laughs> Budvedic castles queen side. Yeah, that's quite a different move. So the plan is to try to get control of uh, of a5, but this looks like it was a fail. It's got to be a mistake to play knight e2 then. It's got to be a mistake. How about rook c1 or something? Or just rook a e1? Anything is better than what he did here. Okay, now it's, it's still not too late to come to our senses. Maybe knight c3 or something. Now black is fine. I don't want you to take my dark square bishop. Two bishops. Black is okay. I'm gonna trade that and you're dead. You might as well resign if you trade queens here. It's such a good end game for black. It's game over. I, I will win like 90% of the time. Two bishops, the roving pawns, no problems. White's pawn majority is useless. Better king for black. Smyslav is, is in trouble here. If he could only trade white square bishops, he'd probably be all right. Look at this. 
now that palm majority matters this is hanging you can't trade pieces he's desperately trying to trade all right so he sacked an exchange he's that desperate that's not good what does the engine say best move and white simply like freaked out he's slightly worse but he should probably hold on this was the right plan it's so sad because bishop d5 is the right plan you want to trade off the enemy bishop pair for some reason smyslav time pressure or whatever he couldn't find rook c5 and he's hanging on just barely Golombik. So, I, I wonder if Golombek is a Hungarian name or if it's just like Slavic or Golomb is, Golomb is a pigeon in Hungarian. It's probably Slavic root. F takes e4, F takes e4, queen c4. We're down the exchange. Black's just defending. Forget about it. I've probably seen this game before, though it wasn't one that I've committed to memory or something. Rook takes d5, rook takes d5, queen check, king here, welcome to the jungle. We've got fun and games. Yeah, it's over. He's just totally toast. The king is walking out for its final lap. Polish nickname for a peace-loving man. Little dove, little pigeon. Thanks, Bob. Right on the money. It's also Hungarian for pigeon. All right, guys. So I don't know about pigeon's annotations, but he was a strong, he was a solid master. Um, anyway, guys, I'm kind of tired. We're going to wrap it up. It was a brutal world championship match. We're recapping there. Smyslav versus Budvinik. Just showing how good, you know, Budvinik could really do in those, uh, how well he could do in those, those Sicilians. I don't know why he didn't play it more against Smyslav, frankly. I guess, you know what the problem is? It just occurred to me. This was kind of an outlier. Um, Smyslav played a lot of closed Sicilians, too. He didn't always go into the open. So he, he kind of, Bavinik got kind of lucky there that, that Vasily was not in the mood for the the wonderful, exciting world of the closed Sicilian. Anyway, guys, Peter Balkus, welcome. We're just wrapping up, guys. You learn everything here. Linguistics, you know, facts of life, survival skills. Hey, welcome, guys. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to wear, to don your mask. We'll be back tomorrow, Friday. Thanks, everybody, for subscribing. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow for Blitz. Sunday Simul. Take care. Stay safe. Peace. Bye-bye.